I wanted to share something from a particular perspective, something that I'm constantly still learning about. And an area where I'm personally still growing and learning. He touched on parents understanding, you know, the struggles, the challenges of their children. Now, I'm going to qualify what I'm about to share through just sharing with you exactly who I am and where I'm coming from. Even though, like I said, many of you know myself personally and even my own history, but I was born and raised here in the Dallas area, uh, just about 20 miles from here, 25 miles from here in Arlington. I was born and raised. I lived my entire life there. I grew up there. Um, and alhamdulillah, um, I have even had the opportunity to become an adult here in the same community, to be working in the same community, to start raising a family of my own in, this, in the same community, and now trying to raise my own kids as well. And the reason why I share that is because I've experienced, I've started to now experience it from both sides of the issue. And with what he mentioned about each side trying to appreciate the other uh, is no doubt very, very important and valid. If I may, and if you'll allow me, and hopefully no one is really offended by what I'm about to say, but if you are, I apologize in advance. And I'd be more than willing to offer a follow-up apology in person to you if it does end up offending you. But <laughs> what we need to understand, very, very serious, what we need to understand is that there is a such thing as bad parenting. It's not a myth. Right? It's not some ghost or demon. Right? Like they talk about the Loch Ness Monster. There's a Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, and bad Christian parents. What do they all have in common? They're all angry. No. What do they what do they what do they all have in common? They don't exist. How can you have a bad Muslim parent? Right? That's the logic. That's the conventional logic. What be the Everyone knows the Quran now. Right? Everyone knows that ayah. Everyone knows that ayah. Allah said you have to respect your parents. It don't matter. It don't matter if they're serial killers. It don't matter if they're bank robbers. Right? It doesn't matter if they are dictators. You will love your parents. Love thy parents. God said it, right? And so there's this weird Muslim myth. You know they talk about urban myths? There's this weird Muslim myth that, that there's no such thing as a bad Muslim parent. No such thing. And what I will present to you as a case study, as an example, I'm going to share two things, only two things with you very briefly. And I'll give you references so you can go and read up on them in more detail yourself. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran tells us about Ibrahim alayhi salam's relationship with his own father. Yes, Ibrahim's father, as mentioned in the Quran, was not Muslim. But nevertheless, Allah is giving us an example. In that very same surah, it earlier praises Yahya alayhi salam, the Prophet Yahya, the son of Zakariya, who was born miraculously in old age to Zakariya and his wife. And when Allah tells us about Isa, the son of Maria, who of course we know was miraculously conceived and born. That when Allah describes both of them, Yahya and Isa were cousins actually, and prophets, both of them, when Allah describes them, Allah says, وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي about Isa. And about Yahya, it says, وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَيْهِ They were both very, very, very extremely good to their parents. So the surah has already set the premise about you got to respect your parents. Okay, we're in familiar territory. you got to respect your parents. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a very shocking story 
about, may Allah forgive me for if I'm overstepping my boundaries, but what seems to be very plainly from the language of the Qur'an, a pretty terrible father. That not only does he not believe, not only does he worship idols, but when his son tries to talk to him about it, he threatens his son, Listen, boy, if you don't stop this now, I will stone you to death. I will kill you. A father threatening his son? That's terrible. And then what does he say? You are dead to me. I, I never ever want to see you ever again. Wahduni means leave me. Maliyan means very far away, meaning don't come back, lose my phone number, lose our address. I never want to see you ever again. You're dead to me. I disown you. That's terrible. And the son is truly hurt. He says, Sqala salamun alayk. He says, Salam, Father. Sa'astaghfiru laka rabbi. If my Lord permits me, if God permits me, I'll even ask him to forgive you for what you've done to me. Innahu kana bi hafiya. God will take care of me. Wa a'atazidukum. And don't worry. If you don't want to see me, I won't bother you. If you are embarrassed by me, I won't make you suffer any more embarrassment. So this story in the Quran is there for a reason, is it not? Of course. Allah is teaching us in the Quran there is a such thing as a bad parent. And I'll share one example from the life of the Prophet ﷺ, where this is kind of a very specific topic and this is something that, uh, you know, Ustaz Murphy could probably um, share a lot more insight with y'all, or even Sister Asar could share a lot more insight with y'all from a psychological perspective, maybe in a workshop type setting. But I'll just I'll mention this here because it still makes that point that I'm trying to uh, illustrate or demonstrate here that there can be bad parents. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a senior Sahabi, companion of the Prophet, his name is Bashir. He was an Ansari, he was from Medina. And he was a very respected senior companion of the Prophet ﷺ, senior member of the community. He had many, he had a few children, and they were all like young adults. Okay? He had one son, you know, every, every child has their own unique abilities and talents and whatnot. He had one son whose name was Nu'man, and Nu'man ibn Bashir. And if you, even on a cursory level, if you read about the sciences of the hadith, one thing that you will find is that a Nu'man bin Bashir, I think is the seventh or eighth individual who has narrated the most a hadith from the Prophet So what I'm trying to tell you is that academically he was very gifted. Intellectually he was very sharp. So he was one of the star students of the Prophet okay? And he was always constantly in the company of the Prophet constantly learning from him, memorizing a hadith, memorizing Quran. He was one of those types of people, up and comers, young, young bucks. And so the father, obviously, can you imagine how pr proud a father would be? Today, if somebody's child is like valedictorian, how proud are we? Can you imagine how proud a parent would be, a father would be? if his son was one of the star students, best students of the Prophet Muhammad I mean, that father, I mean, he was so full of just, you know, pride. And so, and he was so particularly proud of this son that he gave him a very expensive gift. He bought him something very expensive. Kind of like, to give you a relevant example, think of buying that son a car. He bought him a car. He's like, you know, you have to constantly go to class and you go around with the Prophet and you do stuff. So it's like he, it's like he bought him a car. And you know, like Muhammad, he comes to the Prophet and he kind of tells him, he's like, oh look what my dad gave me. And the Prophet is like, okay, inshallah, inshallah, right? And the Prophet called Al-Bashir, the father. 
And he said, Bashir, I have a question for you. You know, the, the, the father came, how's he doing? How's my boy doing? And the Prophet said, said, great, fantastic. He's always here. He's in class. He's constantly learning, asking questions. Great student. So the Prophet said, but however, I have a question for you. Did you just buy him something like really expensive? We're using the example of a car. And he's like, yeah. You know, great kid. Great kid. And the Prophet said, doesn't Rahman have brothers and sisters? And he said, yeah, in your point. He said, did you also buy them nice stuff? Doesn't have to be the same thing, but did you also give them nice gifts? He's like, no, no, listen, listen, listen. I'm a farmer, okay? I'm a simple man. I ain't got that kind of cash, right? I can't afford to buy all of them like nice stuff. But you know, he's, mashallah, you know. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, that's not okay. And then he told him that take back the gift you gave to your son. That's bad parenting. It's not good. It's not the way it's done. And he said it will break his heart. And he said that the damage that this might cause is significant, is significantly less, inconsequential compared to the damage you might do to the rest of them if you don't end up taking the gift back. 